seventh grade and the homeschooler only have a middle school understanding of mathematics, then how can you properly contribute to the development of the mathematical mind of your son and daughter on the right level in the manner they should be educated? Your intentions may be good, but you are harming them more than helping them. So we have teachers, brothers and sisters. And we would love to have our own school, the Truth of God Academy. God has given me a vision. For some, they're intimidated by it. But how do you think corporations function? Years ago, have you, you remember Woolworths, don't you? Yeah. Mr. Woolworths, when he got started, he started off with a dime store. Until he expanded and expanded and expanded, and then he was all across the country. I thought he closed down forever until I went to Europe. I saw Woolworths all over Europe. So I believe God has given us a divine skill wherever we go in the world, souls come. I would love to be able not only to open up churches, but start businesses where the unemployed in the church can be employed. Yeah. Amen. Give me the book of Habakkuk. So as the numbers continue to come in, we're at 6,967. And uh, God knows that made my heart feel good. Because the results of the truth of God just keep getting larger. That's almost 7,000 souls. Almost 7,000 souls in one year. Don't tell me that this is a, a farce, a fluke. It is the Lord's doing. And may not like it, but it's unheard of anywhere. It's not Pastor Jennings, it's God's doing. And it's marvelous in all of our eyes. All right, get this. In the book of Rebekah, chapter 2, and we'll start at verse 1. Follow me. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And we'll watch to see what he will say unto me. You know, you want to see what God is saying. And that's the problem through the years. We have heard everything but what God said. We always should want to see what God is saying. Have a listening ear. Ear try words as mouth do meats. When the word of God is preached, when you come to God's house, you come obeying the words of Brother Solomon, who spake by God's permission and said in the fifth chapter of Ecclesiastes, Keep thy foot. Keep thine foot. When thou goest to the house of God. And what did God instruct us through Solomon to do? And be more ready to hear. Be what? More ready to hear. Than to do what? Than to give the sacrifice of fools. Why? For they consider not that they do evil. I want you to hear this. When you come to God's house, keep your foot. Pay attention. Be observant. Glory to God that way when you hear the word of God. That give you clear opportunity for self-examination and self-evaluation. That's right. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Our minds are too crowded with nothing. Yeah. When we're here, many times we're not here when we are here. That's right. And then you rob yourself the opportunity. Of getting what God wants you to have because you're in the building. 
But you're not in the word. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Do what? In the book of 2 Esther 14 and verse 14. Let go from Let the go. mortal thoughts. Turn loose. That's right. Get rid of. That's right. The thoughts of mortality. Cast away the burdens Pastor Paul of Paul said it this way. They that are after the flesh. They do knew, they knew mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, to be carnal minded, to be fleshy minded, to be mortal minded is death. death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And peace. I'd rather have peace than have wealth. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Let your mind go. This is the first message for the new year. Yeah. Everybody Hallelujah. come back to Bible. That's right. Bring your mind back. Bring your heart back. That's right. Bring your will back. Backslider, bring yourself back. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. Holy Ghost said. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Don't ever approach God's word with your personal logic. The God of heaven declared my thoughts is not your thoughts. Neither is my way your way. He showed us the vast difference. And that said, as heaven is higher than the earth, so are my thoughts from your thoughts and my way from your way. Logic, personal feeling. Personal views, I don't get along with God. No. That's why some folk get offended when I tell them your personal views don't mean nothing to me. For it to mean something to me, it first got to mean something to God. That's right. And I know it ain't going to mean nothing to God, so I'm, it's going to remain. It ain't going to mean nothing to me. <laughs> That's right. Or it's a God, because the first thing I want to know, what did God say? That's right. The That's right. greatest day of our life is when God interfered with it. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. The greatest day of your life, glory to God, was when God interfered with it. That's right. The interfering of life doesn't always feel good to the one that God is interfering with. And sometimes the one don't understand what is God doing and why is he doing it. That's right. Sometimes God got to interfere with your life and bring pain. That's right. Go and take God just to bring you to Him. Yeah. Don't ever use the term describing God. He's trying to get your attention. That's an insult to Him. He can't be called the Almighty. Then he got to try to pull something off. God wants your attention. He's getting it. That's right. And he's going to do it by any means that pleases him. That's right. Did you hear what I just said? He's going to do it by any means that please him. It don't have to please you. It pleases him. So many of us is here because God brought some pain. That's right. Am I right, I said? Sometimes that pain hit in our personal life. Amen. Wasn't praying, wasn't fasting, wasn't serving God until the right pain hit you. When the right pain hit you, you said something that you never thought you would have said. Oh Lord. Or oh Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He knew how hard to hit you. He knew what to hit. And he knew who to hit. Your position, your money, your wealth, your property, your looks, that don't mean nothing to God because you was born without it and you're dying without it. For some to pray, wife had to die. For some to pray, son had to get sick. For some to pray, he smoked your wound, had a miscarriage. For some to pray, you had a car wreck. 
You was laying there, couldn't move. Heard everything. Thank God the doctors were saying over you. You heard them. You wanted to say something and couldn't. Heard the doctor say it won't be long now. Doctor, there's it, no more we can do. You heard that one doctor say, only a higher power can help him now. Can't speak, can't move, but before you know it, tears rolling down your eyes and you can't even open them. Can't move your mouth, but within, you start talking to heaven. Start repenting within. In many cases, that accident, that condition, was your turning point. Right. Are you listening? Right. Pastor Paul was an injurious. Before he was turned to an apostle, he was a murderer. Blasphemer. Going into your house, hailing men and women. But Brother Paul said, I obtained mercy. Light shine from heaven. Hallelujah. Do you know all of us experience that heavenly light? Someone said, Pastor Jesus, I had no light shine from heaven. Oh, yes, you did. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And when the word of God come, that's that light shine from heaven. And it's above the brightness of the sun because the word is above God's creation. That's right. Light came in the form of divine information. Made you start praying. Start making decisions about yourself that you never thought you would make. You thought you were so attached to that second husband and attached to that second wife and you couldn't live without them. Now you start deciding that this ain't worth it. See yourself getting older. You start getting exhausted with the same foolish party, worthless life. Get tired of the same old drab life of clubbing. Start losing that taste for alcohol. Start getting too tired to strike the match. Smoking get boring to you. Friends is calling you. Where are you? I guess I feel like going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't feel like going. What? God is dealing with you. That's right. That's right. Everybody has an appointed time. It is written, I wait for my change to come. Oh. But is that my appointed time? That's right. You come into the knowledge of the truth. Don't get frustrated with your family because they didn't come. You wasn't always in it. You try to show your wife to argue with her because she don't see it. You didn't always see it. That's right. You have an argument with your children, with your husband, and say, Oh, you mean to tell me you're blind? Yes, they're blind. blind. You was once blind. It will come a time, God willing, in their life. Blessed are your eyes. For they see. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Here's chapter verse again. Still in 2nd Esther 14 and verse 14. Turn loose your carnal mind. Cast away the burdens of man. Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature. Get rid of That's right. the weak nature. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Yes. Hallelujah. You come in God's house, unload. That's it. Hallelujah. The Bible says set aside the thoughts that's most heavy. Most unto heavy. Thee. The New Testament says it this way. Cast your cares upon him. That's right. For he cared for you. Care for you. Be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. That's right. Because your adversary the devil. 
walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. Hallelujah. This is why. When you come to the house of God, keeping your foot, Keep paying foot. attention so you can digest what's for you. That's right. It equips you how to give God service. That's right. That's the right. same vicious cycle. 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And you're in the same rut, spinning your wheels yeah. and going nowhere. Yeah. It's the treadmill effect. That's right. Got a treadmill in your house, you ain't going nowhere. But you're running. But you ain't going nowhere. You don't want the treadmill effect when you come to church. You want to run in the way of God's commandments because there's a heart enlargement. It is written, I run in the way of thy commandments because thou hast enlarged my heart. Hold it. Now, if the Bible says, Thou hast enlarged my heart. The purpose of heart enlargement is that the heart may be able to hold more of the emotions of God. That's right. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? When you start out in God. I mean, I love the truth like you should. But after you walk a while. Yeah. Lord, hallelujah. And serve them a while. Sometimes when we just come into the knowledge of the truth, we're overzealous, overrighteous. We are quick to say, I love the truth, but yet don't understand what we're talking. That's right. Because we don't know what all this truth consists of. So it takes time. And in time, when your understanding come open, your heart goes through enlargement. That way you can hold more love for God's word. That's right. And now 10 years later, you can express love for the word that you couldn't two years ago. That's right. What happened? My heart got enlarged. That's right. Hallelujah. I got more room now. Hallelujah. I can feel the presence of God in me more now. Hallelujah. What? My heart got enlarged. That's right. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Back in Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 1. That's what? Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Keep it. That's right. Pay attention. That's right. Stop looking at anybody. Just look at you. Amen. You know, when many of the apostolic churches, a sinner come in who don't know the truth, may got lipstick on, pants on, sometimes they shun her. Benediction is given, they won't even speak to her as if they more holy than thou. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, isn't we the church? Uh, aren't we greater? Because the Bible says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Bible didn't say you are. No. It ain't say you're greater. No. It says, Greater is he that's in you. In you. So in the you. one that's in you is God. That's right. He's the great God. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at the sin in yourself. Yeah. Look at what you're struggling with. Oh, yes. Look at what you're trying to overcome. And when you do that, get out of your judgment seat. That's right. Sit That's in right. judgment on yourself. That's right. Ask God to enlarge your heart. That's right. Right now, your heart is so small, you don't have the love for the truth like you should. But when the heart is enlarged, yeah. the Bible says they receive not the love of the truth. Of the truth. Of the the truth. Bible didn't say they didn't hear it. No. It said they didn't receive the love, love of it. The love of the truth. So a lot of folk like the truth. Yes. They don't love the truth. Love it. Hallelujah. Someone said, well, Pastor Jim, this is so hard. Oh, yeah, it's some hard things in here. But I love it. Oh, yes. I couldn't always say I love it. But you get to a point in God, you can say, I love it. Love it. It's hurting me, but I love it. <laughs> That's right. It's condemning me, but I love it. That's right. It's beating me down, but I love it. That's right. It bring me pain. Yes, but I love it. That's right. Glory to God, glory to God. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Keep it. Pay attention. That's it. 
Foot represent movement. That's right. Keep that foot mean pay attention. Be observant. That's right. When you come to God's house and be more, more ready to more, hear. More ready to hear. Not ready to sit and look at who's doing what, how they doing it. Be more ready to hear. Be more ready to hear. Then to do what? Then to give the sacrifice of food. Hold it. Sacrifice of fools. Fools. Foolish service. Yeah. You know, when you're making a sacrifice, you're rendering to God's service. service. And when you give a sacrifice of fools, you're offering God foolish service. That's right. The type of service that he get no pleasure in. That's right. Now, that's why it's important to hear the word of God that you may know how to offer God service, service. that gives him pleasure, gives him joy. Glory to God, makes God happy. That's right. But when you give the sacrifice of fools, fools. God hate what you're doing. That's right. Even if you love it, God hate it. Yeah. Even if you think it's right, God hate it. That's right. The whole purpose, I want you to hear me good. The whole purpose of church is to please God. That's the whole purpose of church. Because if I please God, then I can be saved. That's right. Until the church of Jesus Christ come line up 100% with wanting to give God all pleasure. All pleasure. If we don't be willing to give God all pleasure, we're offering the sacrifice the fools. of fools. And we don't even consider the evil that we're doing. That's right. All right, go back to Habakkuk now. Listen at this. Back in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1. Follow me. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. Yes. And will watch to see what he will say unto me. I want to see what the Lord is saying. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. <laughs> hmm. I have to know how to respond. When I am reproved. When I am reproved. You know, reproof is part of your walking God. That's right. When you're too big and your position you think is too high, hmm. that you're above reproof, you're a fool. That's a fool. Everybody that got in mind to be right with God is partaker of chastisement. For whom the Lord loveth, he Do you hear? Do you hear the Apostle Paul? In Hebrews chapter 12, we'll start at verse 5. Whom, listen at this. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Wait a minute. You was being exalted, but you got absent-minded about it. That's right. You forgot. You have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you. You forgot the teaching. As unto children, my son. That was being brought to you, children. Children. Huh? My son. My son. Despise not the chastening of the Lord. What else? Nor faint when thou art rebuked you of know, him. You know, some folk can't take it. The moment That's you lay right. them out, they fall out and stay out of church and don't come to about 10 years later. That's true. Can't take it. That's right. I'd rather take chastisement now than take it when Jesus comes. Amen. Any chastisement that God have for me. All right, Lord, come on. That's right. Bring it on now. That's right. Don't go wait until I stand before you because then I'm in trouble. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. You know, when my father chastised me, I despised it. Yeah. But it's a contributing factor to my development now. Amen. I wasn't raised in a time where there was time out in a corner. <laughs> I don't know what that is. If I was time out in the corner, I was in that corner rubbing myself because that belt done some pain. Amen. 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 The Holy Ghost said, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. No what? No faint. Don't fall out. When thou art rebuked of him. How do God rebuke us? Through and by his word being preached. That's right. All of us got improvements to make and got some coming up to do. Oh, yes. So walking around, rolling your <laughs> eyes, blowing your nostrils, frowning up your lips, ain't going to mean nothing to God. No. You might as well come on and do what God say do or go to hell. That's right. And, and ain't no other alternative. <laughs> Amen. In God. Amen. Heaven to hell. That's it. Talk to a sister I met for the first time the night I was coming down and in the uh, administration building. And she saw me. She said, Pastor Jennings. I shook her hand. She introduced herself. She told me where she was from. I can't remember where she was from. She said, uh, you need to come open up a church there. 
She said, and she put herself in it. She said, there's a lot of us heathens then. <laughs> huh? You know, when you're honest, you'll look at yourself and say, yeah, I'm a heathen. <laughs> That's right. Everything in here got some heathenistic ways in them. That's right. Don't think just the sinner got a heathenistic. Church folk Church got folk. heathenistic ways in them. That's, That's right. That's why you need a hard gospel to pound on the head of that church brother and sister. That's right. To beat the heathen under subjection. That's right. Are oh, you listening to the old man? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Do you hear it? In Hebrews 12, now at verse 6. How can you be a proper parent and never chastise your children? That's right. The Holy Ghost speaks plain here. For whom the Lord loveth, whom the Lord loved, he chasteneth. He chased and scourgeth and scourge every son. Every son. Whom he received. Everyone he received, they're going to get a beating. That's, that's right. That's right. That's right. Is that plain? Amen. He scourged how much? And scourgeth every son whom he received. You might as well, someone say, well, they ain't got mine yet. Stick around. Stick around. Pagin, if I leave church, that's fine. Then you get your beating when he come. That's right. And when he come, you won't be able to repent for that beating. No. If you're wise, get your beating now. That's right. Because if you get it when he come, yeah. he going to put you in an eternal lake of fire. If he endure chastening, let God beat you now. That's right. Don't get mad at me because you hear us preaching against earrings and cigarettes and liquor and lipstick and fake hair and men wearing dresses and women wearing pants, right. prostitution, gang banging, murder, rape. Don't get mad with me because you're guilty. Amen. Take your chastisement now. That's right. That's right. Or oh, take God, and when you take your medicine now, you have turned from your ways. Oh, yes. You may not turn overnight. I often think of the sister, we was on Frankfurt Avenue. When we started our telecast, we had a white couple that came in from Johannesburg, South Africa. And during that time, Mandela was living. And they came right where the apartheid was at its height. Yeah. And the brother's name was Brian. And Brian was a bouncer. And a club and a pure premium 93 octane bigot. He said he was in America on a green card. Fishing through the television. Saw us one Sunday morning. This bigot. And then he said he figured he'd come to church and check it out. See what it's about. Seeing what all these blankety blanks was doing. Brian and his girlfriend, Christine, came in. Big white brother. Barbell boy. Before you know it, God start beating on Brian. Yeah. God penetrated them muscles. Oh, yeah. And went right to his heart. We asked who wanted to be baptized. The hand went up of the bigot. Went down in water. After we baptized him, he came to me after service. He said, I got a confession to make. He said, my name is Brian. I'm from Johannesburg. And I was a bouncer in the club. And he told me straight up, I mean no disrespect, but where I'm from, I hate it in words. <laughs> he was crying while he was telling me. He said, while he was preaching, I felt something leaped in me that I never experienced in my life. Then next thing I know, he grabbed me, embraced me. He said, I love you. God knows I love you. He said, I love you. Amen. It doesn't matter what you are. That's right. Nobody is tougher than the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Whom the Lord love, he chased Taste. and scorned every son, everybody whom he receiveth. If you want God to receive you, yeah. prepare yourself to get whipped. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Go ahead and God. Prepare yourself for it. That's right. The Lord beat Brian. He was a happy man. <laughs> and his girlfriend kept coming to church with pantsuits on. Every single week. Faithful. The mothers went to her. I said, leave her alone. 
I say, don't you do God's job. Let God deal with her. You leave her alone. Amen. I told the mothers, don't you ever bother a sinner when they walk in this door about what they got on. Because if they're going to take it off just to make you shut up and then go out there and put it back on, what profit is it? Yeah. Let God do it. That's right. Lord, take God, when God do it, they take it off because conviction hit the heart. That's right. They may struggle with it, but they're going to keep trying because the heart is being dealt with. That's right. Christine was coming. I preached against parents and children. Every type of thing I preached against that had to do with ungodly apparel, she was wearing. And she would say, Amen. <laughs> preach against lipstick, she said, Preach it, Pastor Jen. <laughs> preach against earring, preach it, Pastor Jen. Preach against parents, she'd come to me after service and say, Pastor Jennings, you're telling the truth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Until one Sunday morning, Christine came in with a skirt so long, it was longer than many of those that had the Holy Ghost. She came to me, she said, Pastor Jennings? I said, yes. She said, look. I said, what happened? She said, I just woke up one morning with not a desire wow. or not even a, a want. For pants. She said, I, it, the whole desire just left. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let God do it. <laughs> Problem with many of us, we try to make people change at our pace when we feel as though we should change. Let God do it. That's right. And if you want the change, then let God do it to you. That's right. Are you listening? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. How do I change? That's right. Give me 2 Chronicles. Yeah. Famous scripture. It's famous scripture. 2 Chronicles, I believe, 7 14. 7, 14. Second Are you Chronicles, listening to the old 7 man? and verse 14. It says what? If my people, which are called by my name, let's itemize it. If my people which are called by my name, first thing, shall humble themselves, then what? And pray. Hold it. This is why sometimes many of us don't get no results. That's right. Pastor Jennings, I'm praying. That's nice. But are you humble with humble, it? Humble. Humble. So a lot of us are praying without humility. That's right. And God ain't paying that no mind. No. Like you so much. That's right. God say if. if. That means he's, he's laying terms to you. Yeah. If you want results, if. he's laying terms how to get it. That's right. What did he say? If my people which are called by my name shall, do what? shall humble themselves. That's why that's what the scripture means. A broken and contrite heart. Right. A heart that been broken. That's right. Many of us have a heart of stone. Yeah. For God to deal with you, God wants to break it. Break it. That's right. You get a person with a broken heart, you won't get no resistance out of them. No. Are you listening? If my people which are called by my name. Many of you want God to deal with you and wonder what's wrong. That's you right. got a stony heart, many of you. That's right. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. What? In Psalms 51 and verse 17. The offerings of God. Are a broken spirit. Your spirit got to be broken. A broken and a contrite heart, oh God. A broken and, and a contrite heart, oh God. I will not despise. Do you hear this? That's right. Many of you are hard and cold hard. because of some experience you had in some church. That's right. I saw this. I saw that. That's all right. You better see God. That's right. Things going to happen long as you breathe. That's right. You leave the Lord because what you saw in church. Yeah. Why don't you leave your job like that? <laughs> you Amen. see stuff going on the job, but you stay there, don't you? Yeah. You know why? You want that check. That's right. That's right. Then why don't you stay with God? Because you want to be saved. That's right. That's are you right. listening to the old man? If my people which are called by my name do what? shall humble themselves. Then what? And pray. That's what God wants. That's right. He wants everything to be humble. Come down. Humble. Stop looking at who you are. That's right. You're nothing but a human being. That's all. Anybody here that's not a human being, raise your hand. I want to... I wanna, Zoom the cameras in on you. I got some, e I got some ETs in here. <laughs> eh? Amen. 
every man and every woman, glory to God, have to humble, humble themselves. Humble themselves. And this is why many of us, having got where we should have gotten in God, we haven't humbled ourselves. That's right. Ask God to humble you. That's right. And believe me, God have all kind of ways oh, yes. of humbling you. Oh, yes. The Holy Ghost said. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. Then what? And pray. 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 Humble, then pray. Pray. Not pray, then become humble. No. Now put the cart before the horse. That's right. 